At the end of May 2013, a small but determined group of protesters gathered in Gezi Park, a small park just to one side of Taksim Square, right in the heart of Istanbul. The protest was environmental, deep opposition to plans to build a shopping centre on the site, one of the few green spaces left in the centre of the city. What turned it into a political protest, though, was the reaction of the authorities. After two days, police cleared the area using tear gas and burning down tents. The attack on a peaceful demonstration stirring the emotions of many angry with what they saw as the government's authoritarian stance and of slowly trying to impose more conservative Islamic values on the secular state. The protest grew, spreading right across the country. At its height, an estimated 2.5 million people out on the streets. For the first time after 10 years in power, President Erdogan's regime was in crisis. In mid-June, he gave a speech to thousands, though, of his supporters. Police! Police use water cannons. Police! Police use tear gas. That's how it is in the European Union. It's like this in the United States. It's like this in Russia, in China, and some countries even use live bullets. I know that in all corners of Turkey, millions and billions have prayed for us. You saw the plot that was being carried out, the trap being set. Well, Erdogan warned protesters their time was up, and shortly afterwards, the police moved in, once again using tear gas to clear the park. Across the protests, a total of eight people were killed, more than 8,000 others injured, a movement of unprecedented magnitude. But what now of those who took to the streets? Well, France 24's Fatma Kizilboga revisit Istanbul for France 24. The league champion is always known in advance. This year they decided it would be us. They think they can appease us with the championship, but it won't be enough. We're not spoiled children. We're children whose parents couldn't afford to buy toys. Our pains just made us stronger. For now, Besiktas fans aren't causing any trouble, but if they put a foot wrong, we'll be the first to stand up to them. That's why they're trying either to calm us down or stop us. In Turkey, football is synonymous with politics. When the Beşiktaş Football Club, widely regarded as the team of the people, won the Turkish Championship for the first time in eight years, its overjoyed fans took to the streets of Istanbul, partying late into the night. For them, victory was a sort of revenge. In May 2013, Besiktas fans were at the forefront of anti-governmental demonstrations in Taksim Square. Thirty-five were prosecuted and accused of attempting a coup. Among them, Khan Kabash, who was given a five-month suspended sentence. Our trial served as a way for the authorities to intimidate the rest of the population. They were basically saying, if you do this, you also risk life in prison. They managed to get off, but you won't get away with it. I think that was the only purpose of this trial, and it worked. We're not alone. Many people have been prosecuted, and it's scary because everyone wants their freedom. In fact, we seem to live in a free country, but actually we're oppressed. It's no different to being in prison. Everyone around this table participated in the anti-government protests. Beyhan Demir was among the very first to join the movement. With the ultra fans on our side, we felt stronger. It's no coincidence that they were targeted by a lawsuit. It's probably weird, but as a supporter of Besiktas, I'm proud. I wear it like a badge of honor. We were in the right. We took to the streets. We wanted to be free. I don't think this is a bad thing to be tried for Gezi. 
Bir olmak istedik. Gezi Park consists of 18,000 square meters of green space next to Taksim Square. When the government ordered its destruction to make way for a shopping center, in the shape of a former Ottoman military barracks, a handful of environmentalists occupied the park. The images of their violent eviction spread across social networks and sparked outrage. The protest quickly evolved into a massive showdown with the government. Tens of thousands of people took over Taksim Square and began a sit-in in the park that lasted two weeks. Before being violently dispersed again. Gezi was a bit like the straw that broke the camel's back. Then other grievances were added. The Gezi movement was not the answer to all our problems. But even if only as a show of force, it did give us hope. Subsequently, many people saw it as a defeat. But I prefer to see it as an experience. There's no reason why there shouldn't be another movement like Gezi. In fact, I would say that we have more reason today compared to three years ago. We face a lot more oppression and injustice. This can be over a message shared on social media or just for signing a petition. I'd say that the pressure has increased precisely to prevent such movements. But just as with Gezi, I think these new pressures will give birth to something new. I remain hopeful. Suddenly, security guards interrupt our interview. Three years after the protest movement, cameras are still not welcome in Gezi Park. And on Taksim Square, even the smallest crowds or demonstrations are strictly forbidden. Since Gezi, there have been four elections in Turkey. In power since 2002, the Justice and Development Party, the AK Party, won all of them. And former Prime Minister Erdogan became the first president of Turkey directly elected by the people. But his strength and power worries his opponents, who accuse him of authoritarianism and Islamification of the country. Oğuz Han was only 10 years old when the Islamo-Conservatives came to power in Turkey. He is the vice president of the AKP youth chapter in Istanbul. He's part of what is known as the Erdogan generation. Three years after Gezi, we ask him what he thinks about it. I won't speculate about how it started, but what is clear is that it ended up becoming an attempted coup. I was sad to see young people involved in something like that. We were a little worried at first. It was horrible. All we saw during Gezi were a lot of insults hurled at Recep Tayyip Erdogan and incomprehensible violence. We catch up with Oğuzhan at the Istanbul Youth Fair. Organized by the town hall, it was opened by the vice prime minister in person. On stage, there are traditional costumes and songs in praise of the Ottoman Empire. Also on the menu, a trampoline. There's even a bouncy castle in the shape of the Dome of the Rock. But the stand that attracts the most attention here belongs to the AKP Youth Chapter, which asks everyone to participate in the writing of a new constitution, 
the flagship project of the ruling party. The principle is simple. Everyone writes down the dream they hold closest to their heart. And you, what have you written? We want Sharia law. We want the new constitution to state that the official religion is Islam. That is not what Sharia means. True, not exactly. What we actually want is Sharia. But in the meantime, we would like to see a constitution that explicitly states that the official religion is Islam. In our dream constitution, we would move to a presidential system because we see all the benefits that this brings in other countries. And it is because we believe in the values of freedom that we want a constitution based on a presidential system. That's why we're here. In Turkey, nearly half the population is under 25. The AKP has made targeting it a priority. Its youth chapter has over 1.6 million members, a quarter of them in Istanbul. And its leaders, such as Ozhan, have become the new ambassadors for party projects. Yes, we have a lot of power, but we still face uncertainties due to the current system. If we move to a presidential system, this would no longer be the case. Future elections will not change the executive power, and especially the opposition parties will no longer be able to threaten early elections. All this will strengthen the economy, investors will be reassured and make longer-term commitments. The promise of a more prosperous economy is the main argument in the AKP's campaign to change the constitution and move to a presidential system. Unable to reach an agreement in parliament, the ruling party is preparing to hold a referendum on the issue. To the despair of the opposition, which fears Erdogan's monopoly of power, the outcome looks a foregone conclusion. Today is Labour Day in Istanbul. An event held under tight security. A single demonstration is authorised in the suburbs of the Turkish metropolis under the watchful eye of 15,000 police officers present on site and surrounding the area designated by the authorities. At the entrance, each person is searched by the police. There are security checks. That's normal, but I feel safer when the organisers of the demonstration are in charge. Police searches aren't enough to reassure me. I feel better when it's my fellow union members doing it. There is a palpable sense of mistrust in the crowd. So much so that the head of the procession passing in front of the police provokes a stampede in the crowd. Panicking, Behan speeds up. It has become a feature of the Turkish political landscape. Every May 1, demonstrations turn into a standoff between the government and the unions who insist on walking to Taksim. For the first time this year, the threat of terrorism forced labor unions to abandon their aim. I would say it's a question of organization, but where we hold the protest doesn't really matter as long as we're strong. Do you feel strong? No, but we continue the fight. Behan is disappointed, especially since she is already struggling to identify with any of the dozens of groups represented at the event. It's very difficult in Turkey to form a union. It's particularly hard for fringe groups, and that's why people are forced to turn to political parties. Most of the people you see here understood the power of communal action during Gezi. They're people who still take the time and energy to think about these things. But they don't represent all of Gezi. The inability to form a strong and united opposition also bothers her friends. Özgür is especially sad that the May 1 celebrations this year have been banned in Taksim Square. 
Sadece bir fetiş nesnesi değil tabii ki taksi. Ama orada yarattığımız Taksim is not some sort of obsession. A dream was born here. This is a place that has known great pain in the past. Gezi was both a cry against a brutal and ruthless power, but also a courageous stand, heroic and peaceful. Therefore, the soul of Gezi continues to frighten them, and that gives me hope. I mean, knowing that the powers are behaving this way because they feel threatened actually means they're weak. And that's why I still have faith, despite the current gloomy atmosphere. Taksim Square and its surroundings remained blocked off throughout May Day. A symbol of a government that is increasingly intolerant of opposition and of a Turkey deeply divided and facing an uncertain future. Well, that's all from this week's edition. You can catch it again, though, and all the previous editions on our website. That's at france24.com. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.